So we're here today to talk about a paper that Rachel and I finished recently that's going to be published in the Journal of Educational Psychology. I just want to give a little bit of background on the paper. There, we used to talk about IQ as a kind of underlying cognitive capacity. But in some respects, IQ is no longer the way we talk about underlying cognitive skills. We have um, a, a different language and a more differentiated language to, to talk about basic cognitive skills. Two that turn out in the literature and previous research to be very important have to do with children's or people's ability to pay attention, to sustain attention, um, and to focus even in the context of distractions. Um, another has to do with memory, both being able to remember what you hear and also what's called working memory, which is to be able to actually manipulate um, uh, something in your mind and act on it. So for example, if I said to you uh, 11, 3, 19, and then ask you to give me those numbers backwards, you would have to not only remember the numbers in the order that I gave them, but you would also then have to act on those numbers and give them back to me. So working memory and attention are two critically important cognitive capacities that previous research has shown us have really important implications for how well children can learn in school. But we're, we're, there are a lot of things that we don't know. So for example, one belief among many people who do work in this area is that especially working memory and to some degree attention are more important for learning math than they are for reading, literacy sorts of activities. So one of the questions that this study was designed to address is are these what are, are referred to as executive functions like attention and working memory more relevant in math learning than in reading or are they equally relevant? Another question that the study was designed to address is whether these are more important for young children or older children or people of all ages. Much of the research has been done for fairly young children, but are these executive functions attention and working memory also important for kids who are in middle school. We had longitudinal data that we were looking at that went up to people at the age of 25. So we were also able to look at whether early skills in these cognitive domains predicted people's continuation in education, how many years of education they, they received. We know that they're predictive, but this study really was designed to sort of fine tune our knowledge about the nature of that prediction and the extent of that prediction and the nature of the relationship. And I'm going to turn to Rachel now to tell you a little bit about what the study did and found. So in this paper, we really seek to address four different questions. Um, the first question, as Deborah had alluded to, is to look at the degree to which these very early uh, measures of memory, both short term and, and working memory, and also measures of attention, um, as early as two years old through about four years old, uh, predict really long term academic trajectories, both in reading comprehension and math. And uh, so in, in our study, we actually find that um, these really early skills, even after controlling for things like socioeconomic status and initial vocabulary skills, predict really uh, long-term growth trajectories, they, so such that higher scores in, say, attention or working memory predict faster rates of growth in both reading comprehension and in math. We also um, were interested in looking at the degree to which some of these predictors might be stronger predictors of faster growth than others. And so uh, what we found was that um, among these different measures of memory and attention, uh, specifically working memory as measured by what Deborah described backward digit span, um, and attention are the most salient and strongest predictors of these long-term trajectories uh, in both subjects. Um, then third, we were kind of really interested in uh, whether these, these growth in memory and attention sort of map on to the rate of growth in uh, reading comprehension and math, um, and whether or not uh, the rate at which those things are correlated in early grades is different than the degree to which they are correlated in later grades. 
Um, and so what we find is, act, in fact, that uh, in early grades, so you know, from about um, age five to about 10, uh, they tend to be highly correlated. So growth and attention and growth and working memory are is really highly correlated with growth in reading comprehension and growth in math. But then in later grades, through about age 14, the relationship is uh, flat or, or much less steep. So um, such that attention and working memory changes are much less strongly uh, related to growth in, in um, reading comprehension and math. So then finally, uh, we look at the degree to which these, these initial um, measures of attention and memory are um, predictors of, of what Deborah said, years of schooling attained uh, by age 25. And we find that, um, yes, they are, are sh all, four of, all, all of the measures that we look at are, are strong predictors of years of schooling attained. But specifically, we were interested in, OK, these really early predictors matter for really long-term outcomes. But how much of that relationship is mediated by academic skills that are acquired throughout uh, one's childhood, and specifically by middle school? And so we find that actually when we look at the degree to which this relationship between very early skills and very um, late outcomes, like years of schooling attain, is mediated by middle school academic uh, abilities, um, most of the relationship is completely mediated by middle school scores, except for one of our outcomes. Um, attention seems to, although partially mediated by middle, middle school scores, um, be still predictive of these really long-term academic abilities. Just, I think it's extraordinary, although I suppose not surprising to me because I study early childhood, that skills that you're measuring when children are five and six years old are so strongly predictive of learning trajectories way into adulthood. That's a pretty powerful finding, and it certainly reinforces those of us who believe that those early years are really important and need to be given a lot of attention. There's still a lot to learn. We, we, we have evidence that these skills um, may be taught and that the kinds of conditions of, or educational environments that children are in have implications for how they develop attention skills and, and uh, working memory. We don't know a lot about how to promote them. So I think uh, th at least this study shows that that's probably worth investigating and understanding better because those, those skills at school entry are critically important. Although I, I have to say it is also possible that teaching math and teaching reading um, can contribute to the development of those underlying cognit cognitive skills. This study was, it was longitudinal, but it was also correlational. So we really can't say what's causing what. Uh, there's other research that suggests that they may be simultaneously causing each other. Um, and there is research going on now. What we're doing a study where we're looking at whether teaching math skills to very young children actually does have an impact on their attention and working memory. So as we fine tune our knowledge about this, we'll have much better information that practitioners can use to decide how to maximize children's overall learning success in school.